Hey guys, welcome to a new video. I am going to keep sharing with you our Montessori inspired home setup. We don't have a designated room for Abby's playroom, but we created a whole space for her where we try to incorporate as much Montessori principles as we can. One of the biggest Montessori principles is follow your child and encourage independence, right? So that is our main focus in our playroom. As I told you in our last video, yes, we try to follow as much Montessori as we can, but I am not super strict specifically with the kind of toys that I let my baby play with. So you're probably gonna see things that you're gonna say, wait a minute, that's not Montessori. And that's okay, the purpose of this video is simply give you some inspiration so you can have some ideas to create your own playroom. The purpose behind our playroom was to meet Abby's necessities. So I created different stations and each station practice different skills. We have a station for imaginary play, we have another station for reading and books, we have another for music, we have another for art, we have another one for gross motor skills and that's what you guys are gonna find here. Abby is 18 months old, so this setup is perfect for toddlers. We didn't have the space to have a separate room just as a playroom, so this is what we did. Our main area has the kitchen and in front it's like the family room where you can put your sofas and your dining table. But what we did was instead of putting our dining table, we put our play area. This comes with advantages and disadvantages. Let's start with the bad things. So of course, because this is gonna be an open space where Abby can walk freely and choose whatever she wants to do at the moment, we have to baby proof our whole main area so it was safe for her. In other terms or in Montessori terms, we created a huge yes space in our home. I will probably share a video with you showing you the whole space, but let's focus on the playroom. It also makes our home a little bit messier. When we have company, it's not that we can just shut the door and the mess will disappear automatically. No, of course, because it's in front of everybody. If Abby decides to make a mess, then everybody needs to see it. But I really love having that space there because it's in front of my eyes all the time. I feel like it gives her more security and it also gives me more freedom because if I need to cook or if I need to be in the kitchen doing something, I know that she can play in there happy. I am constantly seeing what she's doing, what she's playing with, and she can usually just turn around and see her mom right there. And even when we have friends over, we can sit down in her couch. Yes, it's always loud because of the kids and stuff, but I feel much safer being in the couch, having my daughter in front of me playing secure. I know where she is, I know what she's doing. It's not about being controlling, but it's more a safety reason for me. To me, she is still so little. I try to give her as much freedom as I can, but at the same time, I like to keep an eye on her uh, in case she needs my help or something like that. The first thing we find is our pretend play kitchen. I did a post months ago on my Instagram and a lot of parents say like, why do you have a kitchen that it's not Montessori, yada yada. After that, I was a little hesitant to show you like our pretend play areas and stations, toys. But then I did a lot of research. It's okay if you guys disagree with me, I'm just gonna share what I think after doing my research. And I consider pretend play Montessori if it doesn't have any fantasy. To me, pretend play is a representation of real life and it gives the kids an opportunity to learn and develop more life skills even if they are just pretending. Yes, Maria Montessori says, that children loves real life activities, practical life activities, but she also encourages kids to use their imagination and I think pretend play is great for that. Now, when I share our kitchen, I get questions like if it makes any sounds or if it runs water and no. It's a very realistic kitchen, but it's very simple, very plain. It wasn't even that expensive. I've seen a lot of people making their little pretend play kitchen as a functional 
kitchen and my purpose when I first bought it was that and I did it I bought the pump and stuff if you guys want let me know in the comments and I can show you how I did that but after I tried it for like two or three months I realized Abby was still too little for that so I put the water in and my idea was to let her wash her hands wash the dishes prep her food maybe drink water from there but she was not interested at all in doing that the only thing she wanted to do was just playing with the water and make a mess so I decided no she's not ready for these I took that away and put the pretend sink I do let her wash her hands alone and stuff but in my presence and in like the designated places so these Instagram ideas are awesome but follow your child in my case she wasn't ready I'm gonna wait a few more years when I think that she has the ability of knowing that that water's not for playing that being said this is only a pretend play kitchen I reuse a lot of our empty containers so inside the pantry I have real empty containers that she can use and I also got her some pretend play food but once again they're very realistic we only use this table for food related purpose so she usually eats here her breakfast lunch and snacks and then for our dinner we eat in our main table where do you get the table a lot of people ask me and this is tricky because I was gifted the table with the chairs and the chairs were so pretty but they weren't stable at all so I got rid of those chairs and got these other chairs that I really like from another company so now when people ask me where I get this set I usually share the whole set the table and chairs from the second company that I got mine I feel like that one is a little bit more safe size wise not for babies at all i know there are tables that are lower that are great for like 6 to 12 months 6 to 18 months old this one no this one's a little tall perfect for toddlers i really didn't want to spend a whole bunch of money in a little little table that she was gonna outgrow soon so i went with the big one i know it's not super montessori to use a high chair but we still use it and that's what we used in the beginning all the time now we don't use this table for activities or artwork or anything like that i kind of like to design specific places for specific things and this one it's about eating it's about food that way it's easier for abby to establish the connection between eating and table all our activities we're doing in another place that i'm gonna show you in just a little bit I love the cubic shelves from Target. They're very affordable and the quality is good for what we need it. In Abby's room, we have a bigger one. Here in our playroom, I put a smaller one. I usually put the toys in her bigger shelf that is located in her room. Here I have more like pretend play activities. I have her little grill, I have her little cleaning kit. That cleaning kit is legit, like it has a bottle with water and a real sponge and stuff I super recommend you guys create a small cleaning kit I got everything in the dollar store the container, the little spray bottle and what I did was simply cut one sponge in half put a little towel and she loves it I also tried to leave the top empty so it gives her like an open space where she can do whatever she wants to do with the toys that she has available I did this very simple I simply put two floating shelves next to it I put a little couch and so she can go pick one of the books that she has available and sit down and read now the couch is a unicorn which obviously is fantasy in the beginning I was thinking to just cut the horn but she loves to grab the horn and she uses it as a handle so I just left it some tips for your montessori bookshelf always keep it very simple don't add too many books between two and four books it's more than enough only rotate the toys that your child is not interested anymore i have the animal sounds book for over six months and she still loves it so i am not gonna move that one try to put the shelves low so your child can reach the books by themselves and make sure that the books are facing forward that way they can see the whole book and see if they really like it or not if you guys put the books 
like we normally use it in a regular bookshelf is not as interesting the table that we have not montessori at all it's plastic it has buttons but here's why i decided to get that one first we got it in a thrift store and the reason why is because it's gonna be meant for her to express her creativity paint it, decorate it, write, do whatever she wants to do with that. I like this one because it has a little clip in the top where you can put paper, but I also can take away the white paper and give her chalk and then she can write in the black part of the table too. Plus it has little spaces where she can put her crayons and all like her art supplies when the time comes. Right now she only needs one or two crayons at a time. It also comes with a little chair that Abby absolutely loves. She just loves being there. Great purchase. <laughs> I also like to have instruments next to the sofa. I like to treat the instruments different as a regular toy. So we do like the play in one place and the instrument in another place. And she loves music, she loves instruments, she loves the ukulele, but we also switch that instrument. We have a little keyboard, we have like little maracas, little tambourines that I rotate when she's not like paying attention too much to the ukulele anymore. I wanted another part of my playroom for gross motor skills. That means like big movements, climbing stuff. I used to have a ball pit. I had the rocker. I'm not sure what is the name. I'm gonna put a picture here. We have the pickler, I think it's the name. And we have this light. The only thing she has shown interest is in this light. She learned how to use this light before she walk. Our slide is like the main character in our playroom. We love it. We also have a sensory table. We usually do the majority of our activities in that table. We have it and we use it all the time. I think it's very practical. You can use these kind of tables in so many ways. That being said, I don't really think it's completely necessary to have it. So we, before we had this one, we had simply little beans that I got at Walmart for like two or three dollars and it worked fine. Of course, great to have outlet covers, cabinet locks, and another big thing that everybody loves is our mat. In the beginning, I wanted something very neutral. So we got these mats that in one side are colorful and in the other side are gray. Because I wanted everything neutral, I put the mats gray. And one day my baby saw the colors and she absolutely loved them. So I was like, color cities. I try to put all our wall decor low so it's easier for Abby to see and enjoy. I have these little posters. I got those on Amazon a long, long time ago, but they're not available anymore. I haven't found the pictures that we have, but I'm gonna try to share some um, similar in the description. I love how like simple and realistic the images are. They're a great idea for learning vocabulary. We love trying the different animal sounds and the names. We try it in English and Spanish. It's not only like there to watch, but also there are so many things we can do with the art display in our wall. And we also have these frames, which I absolutely love. I started with one and then I got the second one and then the third one. These are children art display. So you can easily open it and close. It has like a little magnet and then you can actually store all your child's art inside. I love the idea of displaying all the little art that our children do in our world. For them, it feels great. They see that their parents are showing appreciation for the things that they are doing. It actually encourages them to keep doing more, playing more, using more of their imagination because they know that they're actually being used for something. It actually boosts their confidence and it looks so cute in the world. If you guys want to keep watching videos about Montessori and positive discipline, please subscribe to this channel. Here's another really good video I know you guys are gonna enjoy. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!